Anchor rods are elements designed to resist mostly tension forces. Out of all the tension limit states required by ACI 318, the concrete breakout is particularly important because a concrete failure would be non-ductile, therefore should be avoided. This is Javier Encinas, and today we're going to discuss the tension concrete breakout in anchor rods. Let's get started. When the tension is applied to the anchor rod, the concrete breakout assumes a failure forming a concrete cone based on an angle of 35 degrees with respect to the horizontal. The horizontal projection of this angle is 1.5, the vertical embedment. This method predicts the strength of a group of anchors by using the basic equation of a single anchor MB. This equation here. And then this value is multiplied by a number of factors to account for uh, edge distance, spacing, eccentricity, etc. So this is a formula to calculate the tension concrete breakout capacity of a group of anchors. The denominator is the projected breakout area of a single anchor, and the numerator is a projected group breakout area. The single anchor uh, breakout area can be calculated easily as the area of a square of these dimensions, but the calculation of the breakout area of a group of anchors can be quite difficult since it depends on the location of the anchors and also the geometric condition of the concrete support. When the anchor group is located away from the concrete edges, the concrete cone will develop fully and then the calculation can be done relatively simple. However, if the anchors are located closer than 1.5 H effective, the concrete cone cannot be developed fully and it will be truncated as shown in this image. For example, in this case, the base plate is located close to two of the borders you know, of the support. And in this case, the cone will be developed fully in this area, but it will be truncated along these two edges. Furthermore, where the tension anchors are located less than 1.5, the effective embedment of the anchors from three or more edges, the value of this embedment is to be reduced in the calculations as the larger of the maximum edge distance over 1.5 or the distance between anchors over 3. This is to account for the edge effects and to correct the calculations, which otherwise would be non-conservative. It's important to know that for narrow supports, where the anchors are located close to the borders in, in three or more edges, the calculation of the breakout area is sometimes very complicated, particularly when the layout of the uh, tension anchors is irregular. To illustrate the calculation of the tension concrete breakout capacity, I have prepared an example in ASIP steel. This is a biaxial uh, base plate, 17 by 17. It's exposed to a vertical axial load in the column and also moments in two axes. So in this case, only a few of the anchor rods are exposed to tension forces. This blue area is in compression, so all these anchors are not in tension, and only these four anchors will be considered in the calculation of the concrete tension breakout area. If we go to the tension breakout tab, we can see here the base plate and the location with respect to the support. In this case, the concrete support is large enough, so the tension breakout cone can be developed fully, and the calculation is relatively simple. If we go to the anchor edge tab, we can see here that the uh, embedment depth is 12 inches, shown here. Since the tension anchors are away from the edges of the support, the embedment depth doesn't need to be reduced or adjusted. Here is the calculation of the breakout area, 1842. Now let's reduce the size of the support in this dimension and see what happens with the area. We reduce to 20 inches instead of 30. Now the cone is truncated along this line and the area was reduced to 1600 but the embedment depth is still the same, 12 inches. Let's reduce further the support in this area. Instead of 30, let's say that is 20, and see what happens. Now the cone is truncated along these two edges, and the area was reduced even further, 1,400. 
but the embedment is still 12 inches. If we reduce the size of the support along this edge, let's say 18 inches here, now the cone is truncated along three sides, these three sides. And now you can see that the embedment depth was reduced. Instead of 12, now is 10.6. If we reduce that even further, say 16 inches, the embedment depth is reduced even further, 9.2. And now the area is 1,100. So we can see here that the program identifies the anchor's intention. They are highlighted in this, uh, in this plan view. And the resulting shape of the cone coincides with this layout of the attention anchors. If we reduce the size of the supports in one edge or in two edges, the embedment depth doesn't change. But if we reduce the size of the support along three edges, then the embedment depth is affected, is reduced accordingly. Please note that the embedment depth was specified as 12, but it was reduced to 9.2 for the calculations. This is because the tension anchor group are close to the borders along three edges. With this, we conclude the presentation of the calculation of the tension concrete breakout area in anchor rods. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications for similar videos. Thank you for your attention.